All right, so we are going to move into area and geometry. So we're basically done with algebra type stuff with uh, equations and inequalities. Now we're moving into area. Okay, we're going to start off with area of rectangles and parallelograms. So on the first page here. Okay, it talks about area of rectangles and parallelograms. The first one, the blank of a polygon is the amount of surface it covers. Okay, that is the area of a polygon. Okay, the area is talking about how much space that shape or figure actually takes up. Okay, perimeter, which you've also talked about in the past, is the, when just the outsides, how much does the outside barrier take up? That's perimeter. Put that away and take notes. Okay, so area is talking about how much inside basically, how much of this space is filled up, that's area. So to define the area of a rectangle, okay, you blank the base by the height. Does anybody know what you do? Multiply. Multiply. So you multiply base times height, which is just length times width, basically. Okay, so that is, uh, all you're doing is base times the height. So the algebraic formula is A equals base times height. That's it. To find area of a rectangle and parallelogram, you're literally just multiplying two things. That's it. It's that easy. Area is very, very simple as long as you know the formulas. And I will never make you guys memorize these formulas. All right? It's not fair to you. There's too many of them. So area is measured in blank units. Does anybody know this one? Square units. Okay, cube or cubic units is when we're referring to volume. Square units is when you're talking about area. So they want us to find the area of these rectangles. So like I said, all we're doing is area equals the base times the height. So the base is down here, or whatever makes up the bottom or the top of a rectangle. So the base is six. The height is three. So it's 18 inches squared. That's how you write area. We have to label it now because we're talking about measurements. So measurements are very important when it comes to uh, shapes and geometry and all that. So you have to label. All right, the next one, same thing. Base times height. So the base here would be what? Oh, 12. Now the height would be 16. Does anybody know what 12 times 16 is? What? 12 times 16. I think you're thinking of 16 times two. Write it out, guys. Multiply it out. You guys can do multiplication. We've been doing it. All you gotta do is multiply these out. Literally base times height. Brody? Uh, I think it should be 192. And that would be inches squared. So then the last one, same thing. Area equals base times height. Well, the base here is what? For the last one, 15. What's the height? 11. 11. So then we just multiply. So just multiply those two numbers together. What's five times one? Five. five. One times one. one. Drop down, one times five. five. And one times one. one. So that'd be 165 meters squared. So 16 times 12. Six times two is 12. Three, six, one, maybe nine, 192. I don't know, that's how it works. So that's the multiplication. Okay, so that is rectangles. Now we're gonna talk about parallelograms down here at the bottom. So the area of a parallelogram is the blank of its base and height. 
So what do you think that is? Blank. No. The area of a parallelogram is the blank. What do you think you're doing? Uh, multiplying. So what's the answer to a multiplication problem? Uh, a number times another number. No, it's just a certain word. Huh? Product. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So the algebraic formula is A equals base times height. It's the same thing. Because these are both quadrilaterals. What that means, they both have four sides. So it says find the area of each parallelogram below. So once again, it's just area equals base times height. So the base here is what? Seven. Seven. The height is six. So the height will always be that, di that um, dotted line with the ri right angle box at the bottom. That shows you height of, a par of the parallelogram, okay? So then seven times six is 42 meters squared. So like I was saying, all you're doing today is multiplication, base times height, every time. So then the next one, the base is what? eight and the height ten. ten so our area is 80 inches squared and the last one here just because it looks a little weird doesn't mean that's still the base that's still the height so base is and the height is so 36 centimeters squared that's it I know poly or parallelograms look a little weird. They're just basically sideways or they're leaning rectangles basically to one side or the other. That's a parallelogram. To find the areas, just based on type. All right, so let's go and go on to the next page. Uh, we're actually going to skip this page for now. We're going to come back to it. Go to the page where it has the vocab. So it looks like this. Should be the third page. All right, so we'll start with area. So the definition of area is what? Does anybody remember? Huh? No, that's the formula. What's the definition of area? Go back and look at my first page. The amount of space that... Amount of space a figure takes up. Amount of space that a figure takes up. So an algebraic example would be just put the formula. A equals base times height. Okay, an example would be you can literally draw up a rectangle so that's two inches. This is five inches, and you just find the area. So the base is five, height is two, so you get 10 inches squared. That's an example. What would be a non example of area? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess technically speaking, just a shape. We could do 2x equals 18. That's a four, That's just an equation. That has nothing to do with area. So there's a ton of stuff that does not deal with area. All right? So that's area. Now, let's talk about parallelogram. So parallelogram, all right, is the, does anybody have or think they know the definition of parallelogram, Aiden? Uh, not quite. Well, the the no, that's the area to find that parallelogram. So the parallelogram is just a four sided polygon. That's it. It's a four sided polygon, four sided figure. Okay, an algebraic example would be the formula again. 
You could draw one if you want to show that you're talking about the area of a parallelogram. So an example, you would draw one however which way you want to. Include some lengths, two inches, six inches. Put the area formula down. Plenty of stuff you can put. So in an example, you could literally put a rectangle, three sides, or a pentagon, or a circle. All three of those work. All right, so now let's go back to the other page. So once you have all that, go ahead and go back to the other page. So now we are going to work on some problems here. So number one, what is the area of a square with a side length of three centimeters? Okay, this one's a little bit different because it's a square. But technically speaking, a square is a rectangle. So all you're doing is base times height, but they only give us one side length. What do we know about squares? Uh, they, all they all have the same side length. So if we're finding the area and it's base times height, what's the base? Three. And what's the height? Three. So what's our area? Nine. Nine centimeters squared. That's it. So just because it's squared doesn't mean it changes anything. So I want you guys to do two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Two through seven. Okay, I'm going to give you a few minutes. So all you're doing is finding the area of each one of these. So read the direct or read through the problems and find the area. Do not forget to label. And then we'll come back and talk about these. All right, so number two says, what is the area of a rectangle with a base of 22 inches and a height of 15 inches? So... You just replace the base and the height in your formula. 22 times 15. What did everyone get? Hunter? Mm, that's slowed off. Destiny? 330 inches squared. 330 inches squared. Okay, number three, what is the area of a parallelogram with the base of 100 centimeters and a height of 50 centimeters? Okay, so once again, base times height. So the base was 100, the height is 50. So what is the area of this one, Hunter? Uh, 5,000 centimeters squared. 5,000 centimeters squared. All you're doing with these guys is multiplication. Okay, find the area of the figure below. So we do base times height again. Our base this time is what? 65. A height is 14. So when you multiply this out, you get what, Austin? 910 inches squared. And number five, find the area of the area below. So this is a parallelogram now. So once again, A equals base times height. What's our base? Four. Four. What's our height? Twelve. And what's the area then? Forty-eight meters squared. Okay, number six, still the same thing. You're still just multiplying this out. Okay, so our base would be four and 25 hundredths, 4.25, and our height is two and a half. So when you multiply this out, what's the area, Austin? Uh, you're close, not quite. Not quite. Okay, so when we multiply this out, all right, remember, decimals have nothing to do with the actual multiplication. Okay, they don't come in until the very end. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 plus 2, 12. 5 times 4 plus 1, 21. Okay, so then we move down. So 2 times 5 would be 10. 
four, five, and then eight. So once you add this up, you get five. What is that going to be six and ten? Now this is where we move our decimals. So I look, I have one, two after this one, one after that. So that's three total. So one, two, three. So it should be 10 and 625 thousandths meters squared. 10.625. All right, so Christopher is helping paint the set for the school play. He has to paint a wooden parallelogram with a base of seven feet and a height of 14 feet. What is the area of the surface that Christopher must paint? So you can draw one out here if you want to, you do not have to. Just know that you're still using the same formula. What's our base? Seven, what's the height? 14. So then you just multiply those out and you get what? 98 feet squared. So that would be the area there. Okay, so that is how that works. Just find base times height every time. Any questions? All right, so now what I'm going to have you do. So if, or no, I want to do one more page. Sorry, I forgot about this one. Okay, go to this one right here. I'm just going to do the top here. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll give you a, uh, shapes on the coordinate plane, that graph that we worked with, and they look like this. Basically, all this means is that each one of these is one unit. So all you have to do to find the area is add them up. So what's the area of this? 12. Okay, 12 units squared. Yes. You can do, so base times high is there too, or you just add them up. They both work. Especially when you start, like these ones are easy to add up because they're small, but once you start getting into the bigger ones, that method, find the base, find the height. So like this one, what would this one be? 18 units squared. You always use units if they don't actually have a measurement. Okay, and the last one here, what would the area be there? Nine units, Nine units squared. So that's the only difference with it on the coordinate plane and all that. They won't actually give you a measurement. They'll make you either find it yourself or count them up. All right, so the last part here. Okay, so what's going to happen now is you guys are going to work on some problems on your own. Okay, this is going to be your homework. But the way these printed out, they printed out really weird, so I wanted to show you what's going on here. All right, so the first one that you're going to come across is this warm-up page right here. Okay, that's the next page. You're only going to do the top two at the top. Or the two at the top, basically. I just want you to do those two. Okay, then you go on the next page where it says exit slip, and it looks like this. You're only going to do the three at the top. And the last page is exit slip, but you have two squares at the top. That's all you're working on. So you have seven problems for homework. And you got plenty of time to work on these. Okay, what I want you to do is go ahead and just rip those back three pages off. And then when you get done, staple them, and then I'll collect them on Monday. Okay? If you get done early, work on any missing assignments you might have. Because we are getting, we have three weeks left of school, guys. So you have to get these missing assignments done. Okay? Yes. Um, uh, I got some done. Okay. We'll talk. Okay? So I want you to work on this for right now. Then I want you to work on any missing assignments you have. If you don't have any, work on... Um, Anything that you have from today or tomorrow or this weekend. Okay, go ahead and get started.